Hey guys, Bobby Hughes here with Heritage Pride Custom Firearms and today I'm going to bring you guys a short little video on cleaning your firearms. Alright now, since I've been posting the disassembly, reassembly videos on a lot of firearms, I've had a lot of questions about um, different, different techniques, chemicals to use, uh, lubricant, lubricants to use, so on and so forth. So what I want to do in this video mainly is to go over some of the products that I use, which ones are the best in my opinion, and which ones are my least favorite. And then I've got a Marlin Model 60 here that uh, came in uh, with some uh, feed issues. And so come to find out the only thing that was wrong with it was, it was just dirty. And so I was, I'm going to show you guys a couple of little tricks because the Marlin Model 60 is one that I've had a lot of questions about on cleaning. Um, so I'm going to go over the steps that I use to clean. Now keep in mind, there's not any perfect way to clean your firearm or imperfect way to clean your firearms, but there are things that you shouldn't do and there are things that you should do. So uh, let's go over some of the products that I use. We'll talk about those and then we'll go into uh, some tips on cleaning the firearm. All right, so let's start off with talking about solvents. All right, the solvent is used in the cleaning process. The first thing you do after you disassemble it is you're going to use solvents to break up carbon, old grease and oils, and things like that that have gotten on your firearm or firearm parts. Now, the number one product that I use is hops number nine. Now there's some controversy out there on how to pronounce this. I'm from the south so I call it hops. Some people call it hoppies, some people call it hopies. There's all kinds of pronunciation for it but I call it hops number nine solvent. And This is probably the best solvent that you can use in a uh, very uh, general manner for cleaning your firearms. It's not going to harm the bluing on your firearms. It's not going to harm any finishes and it does a very good job at cleaning. Hops number nine has been out for years. As a matter of fact, I just picked up a bottle the other day at, a, at, a, um, at an estate sale in the box and it's a little bitty bottle. It's in a glass bottle. It was made in 1933. Still has solvent in it. So it's been out for years so you know it's been around for a long time. As a matter of fact, it even says it's been made since 1903. So, hops number nine, very good stuff. Um, and for all around general purposes, this is going to be your best bet. This is what you want to use. You can get it in smaller bottles about this size, or you can get it in, in the bigger bottles. You can even buy this stuff in a gallon jug if you want to. So, for general purpose cleaning, hops number nine. Now, they also started making a hops number nine semi auto. And I've yet to figure out what the difference in these two are. They smell the same, they look the same. They're about the same price either way. So um, it says it's specifically for semi autos. I'm not real sure what the difference is, but I do have a little bit of that left. Um, you know, so anyway, it's out there for you if you want it. Now, uh, something that I'm going to talk about that's probably going to push some people's buttons is carbon choke cleaner or brake cleaner. Now, I use carbon choke cleaner on a lot of parts that I clean. The one thing that you have to remember, there's several things that you have to remember, but the one main thing that you have to remember if you're using carbon choke cleaner is one, it will harm the bluing on your firearm. Two, it will harm plastic and rubber o-rings that may be in your firearm. So you have to remember that it is harmful to certain parts of the firearm if you use something like carbon choke cleaner. Um, I tend to use it on parts that aren't going to be affected. Springs, things that aren't coated in, uh, in uh, um, finishes or special coatings or blued or anything like that. I like to use that you know, for that. Um, and it's really, really good on like, for instance, on this Marlin, um, we have the uh, feed block here. Your magazine tube comes in on the bottom and uh, your rounds feed in and then as the cycles, feeds another round in. Carbon choke cleaner works great to clean inside this 
uh, feed block, and also some of these small parts that would be hard to get in there with a brush. So you can use that carbon choke cleaner for that. It works pretty good for that. Like I said, that's my opinion on carbon choke cleaner or brake cleaner, either one. We'll take the finish off, and you have to be you have to make sure that you lubricate after you use it because it'll take any protecting off that keeps it from rusting. So only in really bad scenarios do I use carbon choke cleaner. Um, most of the time I stick with hops number nine. Now another thing that I like to use when I'm cleaning uh, firearms is a foaming bore cleaner. This here is made by Gunslick Pro. Um, you can pick this up at about any gun shop or uh, I think Walmart even carries it now. It's kind of expensive, but you will get a lot of use out of this. It's almost like shaving cream. Um, but what you, can, what you do with it is you will actually um, use this tube and force the foam down the bore and down the barrel. And that's typically what I use this for is just in the barrel. If I've had a rifle that somebody's brought to me that's really, really dirty and it's got a lot of fouling and uh, a lot of carbon buildup, you can spray this foam bore cleaner in there let it set. <clears throat> While that's setting, you can go clean your other parts. And then by the time you get done, it's going to be ready to clean. And it'll break everything up inside of that barrel. It, it makes sure it cuts into all the rifling inside the barrel and gets all the fouling and carbon buildup out of there. So that works really good right, too. So the next thing we're going to talk about now is lubrication. You have to lubricate your, your rifle. Now, most of you guys know my rule. On lubrication if you've been watching my videos for any amount of time you know how I am about lubrication all right people tend to use tons of lubrication on their firearms and it's not necessary uh, if you put too much oil into your firearms you can weaken your springs you can uh, uh, ruin the finish on the inside of your uh, of your frame and your chamber um, it's just not good to use an excessive amount of oil not to mention it can drip down, get all over your hands, get all over the wood on your stock. And two, if you're a hunter, you want to remember that lubrication has smell. And if you're out in the woods, what do we tend to do when we hunt? We try to get rid of all the smells that smell unnatural to be in the woods. All right, So too much lubrication can definitely affect that too. Um, Barricade by Birchwood Casey. I love this stuff. It works really good. Um, but I tend to use this mostly for cleaning. All right, if I have a barrel that has a little bit of rust on it, I'll use Barricade and spray it on the barrel to, and then use like a 4 aught steel wool. This acts as the lubrication to keep from burning the barrel or taking the, taking the bluing off the barrel. Also works good for after a fresh bluing. Lubricate it, it neutralizes the, uh, the rusting process in the bluing. So barricade is good stuff. You can use it to lubricate your firearms too, but you have to use it uh, sparingly or it'll be all over the place. <clears throat> Couple other common uh, lubrications are Remington's Rimmel. Uh, it's really good lubrication. Once again, use it very sparingly. It likes to run. All right, Hops Elite Lubel, or, uh, Lubrication. Um, really really good stuff all right and i'll try to get a close-up here so you can see a little bit better here's the rimmel and then here's the hops um the hops lube uh lube or oil is really good stuff i do use this quite a bit on uh, my rifles before storage uh just a thin very light coat on the barrel will keep rust from reappearing all right so i tend to use this mostly on the exterior of the firearm clp is a big one. CLP stands for clean, lubricate, and protect. All right, we use this stuff in the military. Um, it it works really good for what it is, but once again, use it sparingly. It's going to drip and run. My favorite out of lubricants is this Shooter's Choice high temperature grease. All right, it's waterproof, so it won't it won't come off in the rain, and uh, it sticks. It's red like regular high temp grease is. It sticks to whatever you put it on. It won't run. It won't get in the wood. It won't um, cause any problems. And it, it, and it just lasts for a long time. And it's very convenient because it's in this syringe tube. It's got a tip here so you can put it right down on what you want to lubricate. 
You can put it on there and then use a cotton swab and move it around if you need to. All right, so this stuff is probably my number one pick. Now we'll talk about one more thing, one more category of cleaning, and that is wax or polish. Now, I've got a couple videos out there. I've got one on a uh, stock conditioning in which I use a wax to recondition a wood stock without actually refinishing the stock. This here is Renaissance Wax. It's pretty expensive. It's going to cost you about $18, $20 for this one little thing of Renaissance Wax, but it goes a long way. And Renaissance, Renaissance Wax works excellent for wood, uh, uh, composite, synthetics, um, metals, blued metals, any kind of anything you want to put this on, you can use this Renaissance Wax on and it works great. And you use it just like car wax. Wipe on, wipe off. Alright, so it's good stuff. Um, and it works great for concealed carry guys um, with uh, any type of uh, revolver with a blued metal or steel frame uh, weapon. Or wood or whatever what you can do is put it on polish your firearm uh, polish your firearm with it one it it protects it from uh, everyday wear and tear and two it protects you from or protects your rifle or I'm sorry protects your pistol from the sweat of your perspiration when you sweat and uh, things like that if you're concealed carrying so Renaissance wax works great <clears throat> Another thing I do is bolt polishing or bolt brightening um, and then also bore polishing and bore brightening on shotguns. And for that I use JB's non-embedding bore cleaning and uh, bore, bore cleaning compound and I also use the JB bore bright. All right? The cleaning compound is just what it says. It's a cleaning compound uh, that acts as a polish and then if you want to really sh put a shine on it you can use the bore bright. I'll use that a lot for uh, uh, bolt polishing or frame polishing or anything like that. So um, through this, I just want to I want to touch on my favorites one more time. My favorites is going to be for cleaning the hops number nine, for polishing the Renaissance wax, and for lubrication the Shooter's Choice All Weather High Tech High Temp Grease. All right, so those are the three things that I recommend to use when you're cleaning and protecting your firearms. So now let's talk a little bit about uh, the actual cleaning process. All right, so let's start with the small parts when you're cleaning your firearm. The best way to clean your firearm, your small parts, is to use your hops number nine, your solvent. Um, and what I like to do is I'll just take the cap off and I'll just dip my brush right down into the solvent and get my brush lubed up. And then I'm going to take my brush and just scrub the parts just like normal. Alright? So just like you're brushing your teeth, you're going to scrub all these parts. Get down in there, use the small side of the brush. You can pick these little gun cleaning brushes up. They're fairly cheap at most uh, gun stores or, uh, like I said, once again, Walmart uh, or online, however you want to do it. But use those for cleaning your small parts. And you, like I said, with this hops, you can clean pretty much anything with it. You're not going to hurt it, all right? And then once you get it good and clean, uh, I like to use an air compressor and blow everything out real good. And uh, then move on to a rag and just wipe it all down, all right? And that's all you have to do to clean your spot. Right, so another thing that comes up a lot in conversation or in comments is how to clean the bore or the barrel. Because, you know, we like to use these ramrods when we clean our, uh, our bore because it allows you to feel what's going on inside of the barrel or inside of the bore. You can kind of feel how dirty it is or how rough it is, how much fouling and things like that. As opposed to a bore snake where you just run it down in there and then pull it through, it's not as, it's not as um, intimate I guess you could say. So by using a, a rod, you've got a lot more control, you get a lot more feeling out of it. But the rule of thumb is, is that you never want to push the brush, the bore brush, down from the crown to the chamber. You always want to pull the brush in the, in the motion of the bullet traveling. All right, so if, obviously if the bullet is fired from here and travels down the barrel and out the crown of the barrel, then you want to push the brush that way. The best way to do that in a situation like this where you can't get to the breech because of 
the frame of the gun. And I mean, you could do it if you took the barrel off, but if, if you don't have the tools to take the barrel off, then how do you do that with a ramrod? Well, it's simple. You put the, you put the ramrod down the crown of the barrel so that it sticks out of the bottom just like that. And then you screw your bore brush onto the end and then pull it out of the barrel just like that. And that's the best way. It takes a little bit more time because you have to pull it out, take the brush off, push it back down, put the brush on, pull it back out, things like that. But it keeps you in that general rule of thumb of always pulling the brush out or pushing the brush out of the barrel, not pushing it down into the gun. All right, so that's just a little tip on that. As far as cleaning the outside of the, the, outside of the barrel, your, uh, your parts, your um, rear uh, sight, your front sight post, the exterior of the frame, things like that, just use your regular hop number nine solvent and a brush and clean it up, wipe it down real good, and then give it a very, very light, generous coat of oil, and that'll keep it from, uh, from rusting on you. All right, what I like to do is put a, a light coat of oil on it with a barber brush and then take a rag and wipe it back off. That allows to get the oil into the pores of the steel, but it keeps it to where when you touch it, you don't get all sticky. All right, so I've got this one all cleaned up now. I've got this clean, I've got the small parts clean, and I'm almost ready to put it back together. One other thing I want to touch on just like, I, just like in uh, regular hand, or in handguns, you want to clean your magazines. Right? Because your magazines is the source of the ammo that feeds into the rifle or into the handgun. In a, in a long rifle, you want to clean your mag tube. All right? So you can pull your mag tube off and then use a bigger bore brush, run down the mag tube, clean it out with some solvent, spray it out with the air hose, and then wipe it down. And same thing, treat it just like the barrel, it's blued. So you put a little bit of oil on it, wipe it off, and then you can reassemble your gun. For the inner part that goes inside there, your inner mag tube, spring load that keeps it all nice and tight and tension, you want to polish that up with some oil as well, with some solvent oil as well. All right, so once you get your whole thing clean, then we're ready to go back inside and reassemble. Lubrication, like I said, you guys know my rule on lubrication. One, you want to put lubrication wherever there's metal to metal contact. You want to put lubrication on springs and you want to put lubrication on moving mechanisms, parts, all right? Everything else gets a very light coat of oil, just like the outside of your barrel would, all right? So put a little bit on, wipe it off. It allows it to soak into the pores, keeps it from rusting, and it prevents a lot of excess carbon buildup, all right? So that's pretty much the 411 on how to clean your guns and what products to use. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. And until next time, get out there, shoot some guns, be safe, and most importantly, have fun. See you guys later.